Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're looking at better understanding credit reports today for Credit to Watch. So I'm going to take you through some insights. Um, just as a bit of a point of introduction, I'm Matt Jackson. I'm the National Sales Director here of Credit to Watch. I've been with the business since 2012 and has um, I've been really focused on growing the sales team in my time here. Uh, Patrick Coughlin, who usually takes uh, these webinars, um, is interstate today, so you've got the, the pleasure of me presenting, and I'm, I'm really excited. Before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, there's going to be a question and answer box that pops up during the presentation, so uh, if you need uh, any advice or questions, we've got three of our um, salespeople on the line, Alex, Tully and Natasha, answering questions, so yeah, feel free to um, ask things along the way as we go. Also, if you need to duck out early or you miss, um, one of your colleagues has missed the slides, they'll be uh, on our website within the next 48 hours and also emailed to the people who have participated in the, in the webinar. So looking at the agenda today, we're just going to uh, quickly go through a little bit about Credit to Watch, who we are and what we do. We're going to then look at our small business risk review, which has just released its results for the latest quarter. Look at some data sources, so where the information comes from that's fed into our credit reports. We're going to look at unincorporated entities, so those tricky sole trader trusts and partnerships. And then I'm going to do a live demonstration of our credit reports. I'm going to give you a couple of examples um, for a good business, a bad business and a trust, and also what to look for on these reports. And I think that's, that's critical when you're trying to assess credit. We'll also then just do a quick question and answer session, uh, which will be right at the end of the, of the presentation. So a little bit about Creditor Watch, for those who are unfamiliar with us and what we do. We're Australia's largest credit bureau. We have 50, over 50,000 customers. And what, why we're unique is that we gather both um, small business and large corporate information. So we have small business plans that uh, sole trader, can uh, run one or two reports in an affordable manner, right up to large ASX listed entities who are run, running thousands of reports per month. And that gives us a re really unique cross section of businesses that um, use Credit to Watch and all input information into our system. So if you imagine the business landscape as an iceberg, um, typically the corporate customers, those larger customers are what you see above the water but below the water is all the small businesses that haven't been able to access credit reporting previously because it's been too spent expensive, or they might be doing that once or twice a year if they have a really large account that comes in. So what Credit to Watch has been able to do is really um, make that credit reporting affordable to all entities, both those above and below the water in the iceberg analogy. Um, some of our products that we look that we um, sell is credit reports, monitoring and debt collection tools. And that's our core product and that's called Credit to Watch. Um, we're going to be going through the credit reports today and also touching on the importance of monitoring. And there's also previous um, webinars on our debt collection tools, which you can find on our website. Another product is called Apply Easy, which is an online credit application. So that allows your customers to fill out a credit application online and it validates and verifies all the information as the customer is filling it out. It's a really good time saver for those who um, are doing multiple credit applications per month. The third product that we sell is something called Dead Logic, and that's a trade program. It's typically used by our medium to large size customers and it really provides analysis on your age trial balance. So that's a list of people who owe you money. Now that ATB analysis, that essentially lets you know who your best customers are, who your riskiest customers are, and who you should be collecting money off as well. Um, and then we have some additional products which really help around cleaning up your custom list or your database. And that's data washing, so validating information you already have or we also have a product called Clean Easy, which is gathering new information off your current customers. Something also unique about Credit to Watch is that we're the only credit bureau that allows you to link your Zero and MYB accounting packages to a credit bureau. 
The real beauty about this is that it helps you match ABN and ACN details um, with your Creditor Watch account. It pulls all your receivable data into Creditor Watch and will help you identify who your best and riskiest customers are. And I guess the whole key and ethos around Creditor Watch is affordable credit reporting. So making it affordable to do one or two checks a month, right up to um, a few hundred to a thousand uh, checks per month. So now we're just going to talk about the small business risk re review. Now these results, um, they're provided every quarter and we look at a number of sources of information to create this small business risk review, uh, predominantly from the government registries, which is ASIC and the Australian Business Registry. We also look at the various court data around Australia for uh, court actions. And then we use some proprietary information from Creditor Watch as well and our members. Now, we're, there's a link there if you wanted to click and review this previously, but um, typically these insights provided by other bureaus are all about doom and gloom. They try and tell you that the economy is not in the best shape, so you buy more credit reports. Um, I really like to focus on the positives of these reports. Um, the idea is that they're an indicator of you and your industry and, and your state that you operate in, but the levels are nowhere near as bad as GFC and, and post GFC levels. So in terms of the Australian economy, most people um, are looking, looking pretty good. There are industries that tend to struggle with payment days slightly more than others, but as a position, as a, as a country, we're looking pretty rosy. This is an excerpt from that small business risk review. This was one of the more important slides uh, that I, I guess I picked out of that. And it's looking at the number of failed unincorporated, unincorporated entities. So that's sole traders, trusts and partnerships. And there's been just a significant rise in these type of businesses failing. So these are what we typically class as small and some medium sized businesses. And the whole idea around these entities is that you typically can't find as much information as you can on an incorporated entity. So that's an entity with an ACN. Um, so the whole, I guess, ethos around that is all about credit monitoring. You might look at a credit report today and the company that you're assessing credit for is Rosie. Uh, that is essentially a snapshot in time. It's how that company is operating today. The real benefit that our customers get is from monitoring their, their customers. So the whole idea is that when you do that snapshot in time, that credit report, it looks good, but the business landscape changes very quickly. And it's very unlikely that that customer will ring you up and let you know that they're being taken to court by one of their suppliers or potentially one of your competitors. So that monitoring piece is really important, especially for those unincorporated, unincorporated entities. It's a good idea to point you in the right direction if someone's having some cash flow problems. We're also just going to talk about the road to insolvency now. Uh, now, this is something that we'll highlight in the credit report, but it's quite important, I think, to draw your attention to now. The road to insolvency is not always linear, but what we typically find on our bureau is that a default will be lodged on a business and it's typically for a, a, a lowish dollar amount. So it might be in the hundreds or thousands of dollars and it's typically six to 12 months before you see a mercantile inquiry or a court action appear. Now the reason the defaults appear so much earlier is a couple of reasons. One is they're typically from small to medium sized businesses at that early stage. They are probably a B or a C supplier, so not a critical supplier, but still important to the business that's being defaulted. Now, what that means is they're having cash flow problems, but they're struggling to meet their obligation with their A suppliers, those suppliers who are critical to their business and operations. So what you tend to see is the late payment or non-payment to B and C suppliers, so those second and tier second and third tier supplies that someone deals with. So for an example, if I'm a builder, uh, my A supplier might be a, a brick, uh, brick company like uh, Brickworks, for example. I need their products to be able to complete my job. 
A B or a C supplier might be someone who delivers paper to my office, who provides the water in our office, who waters our plants, and they're the type of uh, companies that are most likely to default in this early stage. The other reason that defaults are typically for smaller dollar values is that predominantly they come from our small to medium sized business users. And what that means is that that $2,000 that's unpaid by the builder is $2,000 directly out of their pocket. So they're actually more likely to default than a large corporate customer. Now why that's important is that this is a really early warning sign that someone's having cash flow problems. You don't want to um, ignore these signs just because it's only a small invoice value. What you should do is take notice of it, continue to monitor the company, and also check out how much you have outstanding with that company because it might be that you are an A supplier and you're most probably going to be the, la um, the last to know if someone's having cash flow problems. So a default is a step one. Typically step two is a mercantile inquiry. So that's when a debt becomes big enough for someone to wanna use a debt collector to try and chase that. Uh, they're usually uh, in the high thousands or tens of thousands of dollars and you're obviously paying commission to a debt collector to try and recover that amount. They're usually from our A and B suppliers, so those critical, more critical suppliers, and they're usually for a higher dollar value. The third stage is usually a court action. Now that's when an A supplier or a key supplier is not being paid for a significant amount. Um, it's obviously of a dollar value that warrants a court action being raised and the associated costs. Uh, and those A suppliers will go for the jugular with these type of court actions. They will typically happily wind up a business if, uh, if it will result in either a part payment or a non-payment in, in a debt. And unfortunately, typically the fourth step in that road to insolvency uh, is an insolvency notice. So that's lodged when someone is um, in, become insolvent and it is delivered through insolvencynotices.gov.au the day it happens. So as we go through the credit report, just keep, out, uh, keep an eye out for the road to insolvency through adverse information and I'll, I'll highlight that at that stage. But it's important to think about uh, the different types of adverse information that we display and how they're early warning signs for people to be able to um, stop getting stung for higher dollar values. Okay, we're just gonna do a quick poll now and talking about what type of entities do people deal with? So do you deal with trusts, sole traders or partnerships? Now, people are just filling this out now. Sole traders, trusts and partnerships are most typically the most um, difficult entities to assess credit on. The reason being is they don't have the reporting regulations that incorporated entities do with an ACN. They're also the most transient. It's much easier for a sole trader, for example, to pick up and move states than a director of a business who has obviously multiple workers potentially. They're also the most time consuming customers that you'll typically deal with. The reason being is that they don't have a credit professional typically working in their business and they're busy with lots of other things like their day-to-day -day operations of the business. Perfect. So I'm just going to close that poll now. And 90% of you have indicated that you typically deal with sole traders, trusts and partnerships, which is a significant number. And this is usually an area of frustration because you can't get that information that you can on those incorporated entities. So with Credit to Watch credit reports, um, we do provide a report on sole traders, trusts and partnership. On each of those entities, it will include adverse information, registration dates, so it's a good indication of how long they've been trading for, the entity status, so obviously registered or deregistered. We also provide a credit score, which can be very useful for these types of entities. Uh, that can help with a gut feeling that you might have if someone isn't paying their bills or if someone is seems not quite legitimate when they're signing up to a um, line of credit, those credit scores can definitely point you in the right direction. 
But my biggest tip with these type of entities is to monitor those entities. Those monitoring sole traders trusts and partnerships is typically a, a really good way to track how that sole trader trust or partnership is going through the life cycle of their business. They may be a newly incorporated entity that you don't have much information on other than the ABN, the status and the company name, but monitoring those entities will eventually pick up those adverse uh, information like the defaults, etc. So that's my biggest tip around these type of entities. If you are dealing with trusts, you must gather the trustee information. So who's actually behind the trust and you want to be doing a credit check on both of those entities. Now also looking at trade credit insurance, uh, some of you will be using uh, trade credit insurance and I just wanted to let you know that our reports um, are verified by the major insurers in Australia and can be used for your discretionary limit reporting. So this is really important because typically that's a big additional cost to your trade credit insurance policy that isn't factored in when you pay that um, annual fee. So it's important to remember that by using our discretionary limit reports, it allows you to reduce the overall cost of that process and still remain to be covered. The other important part of this is to monitor your customers. So monitoring will provide you early warning signs that someone might be having cash flow problems. Now it's great that you have that safety net of trade credit insurance, but uh, we would all much prefer to reduce the risk or limit it or have no risk by identifying someone that's having cash flow problems early rather than having to go through the claims process and obviously as a result only usually getting 85 to 90 percent back of that that debt as well so um, just keep that in mind as we're going through the credit reports also so just looking at our reports at a glance first thing you'll notice is that we're able to provide director and address information and that comes typically direct from ASIC uh, and is up to date. We also then look at adverse information. So that's your payment defaults, court actions, mercantile inquiries and insolvency notices. And that's what we're talking through with that road to insolvency. The other thing we're gonna look at cross directorships and I have some pretty staggering um, statistics to share around cross directorships. And also an important area is the critic ASIC documents. So looking at for things like strike off actions. We then incorporate positive data. So this is really important. It's not just looking at bad payers, but it's also looking at how good payers pay their bills. And a really good example of this is a company, for example, like Woolworths, who will have typically no adverse, very large stable organization, but they have a very poor payment score they pay the market significantly later because they dictate terms than most others. So a payment score can obviously give an indication of, yes, I want to deal with this company, but I'm also going to factor into my margins that they're going to pay me at 60 or 90 days. So we're just going to do a live credit report now. And I've just jumped into Creditor Watch. This is our dashboard um, and the best place to navigate for all of our credit reporting needs. We're just going to do a live search now and I've prepared a couple of uh, good examples for us to do. So first of all, we're going to look at a, a bad company. So one that I wouldn't want to be dealing with. You'll notice that our predictive search box is popping up there as I'm filling out um, the ABN. That's a really good way to um, cut down time when you're searching for entities. Okay, so the good part about Creditor Watch is every time that you um, access a report, it's gathering the information live from ASIC, the Australian Business Registry, um, looking at our on-file court information and all the on-file member information that we have. And it collates it in a really easy to use format that is designed for people who don't have a credit eye, a trained credit eye, to be able to assess a credit um, a company straight away. So at the top, we have these things called widgets, and they're designed to draw your eye to that important information straight away. It means you don't have to look through a 15 or 20 page report to get the information that you need. It should be all a snapshot right at the top. 
all of these boxes are clickable and if you want to go straight down to that section it will zoom you straight down and expand the section for you also while we're at the top i'll just point out this monitor monitor for changes button um, if this was an entity that you wanted to start dealing with on a regular basis click that monitor for changes button and it will alert you to any new adverse information that comes through or company changes uh, that comes through the monitoring Below our widgets, we have a giant red wrist box. So if the widgets didn't provide enough insight, any entity with this red wrist box is someone you should be spending a little bit more time looking at their credit report. The design of this is really for the purpose of skipping over those entities that don't have adverse information. It allows you to ver uh, verify the ABN, ACN and the directors and move on and the ones with the red wrist box you want to spend a bit more time with and really decide, do I want to be doing business with this entity? Or how about let's do business on a COD basis first? In the summary information, we look at Australian Business Registry and ASIC data. And this is publicly available information, but it just compiles it in an easy to read uh, one-stop shop rather than looking at the two different agencies. And what I'm looking for here is to validate the ABN, the ACN, uh, the main name, and also looking at how long the entity's been around. So you can see the incorporation date of the entity also. It also tells me what type of entity it, it is. And the important part around that is that a company is typically uh, less risky than a sole trader trust or partnership. So I'm starting to paint a picture in my mind of who I'm dealing with and how risky they are. We also have a credit score available. I'm just gonna purchase one now. Now you can see that that has obviously updated um, in the system and it becomes a lot uh, live immediately available for you. This credit score is currently a one and it's pretty much the worst you can have. It's a score out of 800, uh, 850 and takes into account payment and risk information. So the risk information looks at things like the industry, the directors, does the director have any adverse information, how long the entity has been around, the entity type and a whole host of factors. And it'll also plot it against an average for you. So you're looking to deal with companies around or above that average. We also give you a risk of failure score. This one is critical because it's in under an external administration, but it gives a percentage to failure, which is an additional uh, point as well. My favorite part, and I think the most important things about the scores is that, that historical trend. So when I look at this, I'm looking for trends in the score to see whether it's getting better, worse, or staying the same. So this obviously has declined significantly over time. And as you'll see in a little bit, that's predominantly uh, been due to adverse information being put on this company's credit score. Uh, but you will see uh, industry changes affect the credit score, um, entity status changes, et cetera, will also feed into that. So if it wasn't a warning sign in December that this entity was below the average, you can see over time it's been decreasing uh, in a pretty consistent and um, not favorable manner. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some adverse information. The first thing you'll see is court information. And this is entities that have been taken, uh, taken this company to court. So it'll give you the date, the plaintiff, so who the, who the company is, um, the amount that that has also been registered for. Now something I just wanna uh, get you to notice here is the first court action was lodged in March 2017. So that's important just to keep in mind. It's also for a very significant dollar value. We then look at payment defaults. And this company has quite a host, but what you'll notice is the payment defaults actually started coming in late 2016. So this means if you are monitoring this entity, you would have seen multiple invoices for a fairly significant dollar value appearing over time um, as this company started to deteriorate. So if I got 
um, those defaults coming in, I would see that as a big warning sign that this company was having cash flow issues. And that was significantly earlier than that court action that, that came through before. Insolvency notices. So the insolvency notices come from a unique um, registry called insolvencynotices.gov.au. With our service, you get full details of the notice for free. So it'll actually let you know who the administrator is, full contact details, name, phone number, and email address as well. So if you are a creditor, this is really important because it allows you to register your interest, but also keep up to date with any changes that's happening with the um, administration of the entity. Mercantile inquiries. Now this entity didn't have one, uh, but this is sourced from our 200 debt collectors that use us for pre-litigation work. So typically what you'll see here is that if a company is given to a debt collector, they go through their process, they are unsuccessful in recovering the outstanding amount, they will then recommend to their client that, that they should um, pursue legally the, a debt if it's for a significant um, enough dollar value. And that's when that mercantile would, uh, inquiry would appear. It's after they're doing their due diligence in order to sue someone. Critical ASIC documents. So during the life cycle of a business, um, there's typically dozens of documents lodged. Um, we pull out the important ones for you and allow you to have a look at when they're lodged and the importance of them. So they're mainly uh, around uh, winding up uh, insolvency notices, that type of thing. We also pull out status changes, both from ASIC, so you can see the day that uh, the administration went through, and also the Australian business registry changes, so when they're registered for GST, or not registered for GST. So everything that you've seen up to this stage is available on all entities, um, sole traders, trusts and partnerships included. Now we're looking at ASIC, paid ASIC information. So this is uh, for entities with an ACN. And what it really shows you is directors, their registered addresses, shareholding structure um, and registered documents. So the whole purpose of the Creditor Watch Bureau is to share information. And what the way that we do that is if someone buys an ASIC extract, any one of our 50,000 members, everyone else gets to access it for free, which is really important. Um, it saves you paying what they call an on-file cost at other credit bureaus. Um, this one obviously has it on, on, on file. It'll also note, note if some of the information's out of date. So you can see that there's been new documents lodged. Um, that, this isn't something that I'd refresh the ASIC extract for. It would only be if really there's a director change or a shareholding change that you're probably interested in. So it means that although it's on file and slightly out of date, it's all current information in the areas that you want to assess. Now looking at director information, uh, so here we've got the name, date of birth and address information. A really cool tool is our street, foot, street view. This allows you to drag and drop the little man on the street where the uh, director lives. And the whole idea about this is allowing you to see if the um, director that looks like in this case has actually put their, um, their commercial address as their residential address, which is a warning, uh, warning sign in itself. Um, or if it was their residential address, uh, looking at whether they own the property, whether it's a waterfront mansion or um, a small house in the suburbs. So it's all trying to decide if there's equity that you might be able to gather if something does go sour. We also look at cross directorships. Now with the Creditor Watch cross directorships will not only tell you the status of the entity, but will also let you know if an entity has adverse information on it. So here you can see if I click through to this credit report and you can do that for free with your membership, it doesn't cost you every time you open a new report. This company, although it is registered and looks fine on the surface, there's three defaults um, that have already, already been lodged on this entity. Now some staggering statistics around directors. A director who's had a previously failed business is two times more likely to have another one. 
Even more staggering is a director who has a previous court action is five times more likely to have another one. So if you see a director with adverse on their uh, cross directorships, or they've had some previously failed businesses, it's a really good warning sign about the future behaviour of that director. Registered addresses, so it's looking at their principal place of business and registered office. Typically the registered office will be a um, lawyer or an accountant and their principal place of business will be their operating address. Shareholding structure, so who has uh, shares in the business. If the shareholder is a, direct, uh, is a company, you can actually click through and view their credit report for free. So you can actually chase things up the tree a little bit and see, okay, where does ultimately my uh, risk lie and what is the, that, that, the shape of that company? Looking at ASIC documents, so that's all the documents lodged with ASIC. So from director changes, winding up notices, etc. Previously extracted extracts, so that means uh, 47 um, people have bought an ASIC extract on this entity before, and you obviously get the benefit of that being freely available. A cool little tool in here, although it's very dramatic to uh, zoom in, is our visualisation tool. And the whole idea with this is really to draw your eye to links in a business. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that um, the, two, the director here has the company address as one residential address. Um, a really useful tool with this is if you have multiple directors that are actually in fact family members, typically their addresses will match up and your risk is significantly higher with a family owned business rather than um, director, three or four uh, different upstanding directors. With a family owned business, typically there might be one person driving the business and just uh, one or two others involved in the business. Uh, so it's easier to corrupt family members or even uh, them. They might be silent directors in that instance. So I kind of try and assess the directors involved. How many are there and are they related? The final thing on here is related information. So business names. So that's a bad credit report. I know we're running short on time. So I'll just quickly show you a good credit report. Now, I think a thing that you must keep in mind with credit reporting is that no information is good information. Not all entities have adverse information on their credit profile. So if you see a tick in one of these boxes, it's really important to note that that's good. Not all, all businesses have that adverse information. So um, it's important to, to take that into consideration when assessing credit. The final profile I'll just quickly show you is a uh, trust. So this is obviously an area uh, where people like to um, see what information is available. There's not as much information available as a company because there's no ACN information, but what you still um, do get a credit score. You get to look at the entity details. So the name, the ABN, how long they've been operating and the type of entity. You're also still able to purchase a credit score on these entities and they're a good indication um, of whether they sit above or below the industry average. You can see on this particular entity, it's slightly above. And that's that uh, the, the failure score that we we're talking about earlier. And this company is on the lower side of that failure. And that 12 month trend, this company is nice and stable. And that's someone who you wanna be entering business with. There's some additional reports you can buy. We've covered some of them off. The most popular ones are our comprehensive report, which um, purchases a refreshed ASIC extract, looks at PPSR information and, and our credit and payment scores. And that all feeds into one easy to use PDF. Our New Zealand, New Zealand credit reports are also very popular uh, for those companies dealing in, in New Zealand. Just quickly, some features and benefits. Uh, the whole idea about Credit to Watch is provide credit reporting to all entities for a significantly cheaper price. There's a flex, flexible monthly subscription uh, with some additional pay per click, such as an ASI extract. But what it enables you to do is run your selected volume of credit reports per month for a flat monthly fee. So you know how much the cost is going to be before you um, start clicking around. The other good thing about our site is if it's going to charge you, 
it will pop up and let you know prior to that occurring. We've all obviously got a lot of unique data from our mix of small business and um, corporate entities, and that's unparalleled in the marketplace um, in Credit Bureau land. Our portal is really designed to be user friendly, so people without a trained credit eye can assess credit confidently, and those who do have that trained credit eye, uh, you can pick up the reports very, very quickly if you're used to looking at someone else's. To keep the cost of reporting down, we obviously pull that ASIC data, which is really important. So it means that you don't have to pay on file charges when you're accessing your credit reports. Just touching on some new features that are coming, we're improving our director summary, and it's actually gonna pull out all the information in those cross directorships. So it'll list um, Matt Jackson as a director. It'll say how many businesses I'm currently involved in, my past businesses, and also let you know my cross directorship adverse information. So if I have two, two um, court actions over three businesses, it will pull that information out. And that's coming early next year. There's also been some other webinars on our debt collection tools, which is continually um, improving. So if you wanna seek those out, jump on our website and it'll also allow you to um, go back and review those webinars. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Um, I hope you found it informative and useful. You can contact us on the, um, with the free trial link that's here. Have a look on our Credit Watch blog for some more um, learnings around debt collection, credit reporting, how to read a report, et cetera. And please stand by for a quick survey that's about to take place, just to gather some feedback on the information you heard today and how we can improve in the future. So thanks very much for having me. I really appreciate um, your time and being able to present to you and please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.